Cheddar TV, or CBS News. She is an expert stock market analyst and the founder and owner of an international educational company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. Her trading methodology is based on one strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. Here to present trade on the side of institutional money and gaps is the great Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, Melissa. Hello, good morning. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much. Thanks for the nice introduction. I think I have 45 minutes, correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, oh. You'll go f till noon. Yep. Perfect. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Melissa Armo. I live in Manhattan. It is a gorgeous, beautiful, sort of fall, sort of summer day here in New York City. And I am going to talk to you today about gaps, about trading. It's an exciting time to trade. We're getting into what is going to be a very, very exciting week in the market. Why? We have a Fed meeting on Wednesday. <laughs> the market's been rallying the last couple of days. And it's funny because everybody and the brother thinks the Fed is going to drop rates a lot on Wednesday. I'm in the camp that I don't think it's going to happen. Either they do no rate cut or they do a half or they do a quarter. So I'm pretty much somewhere in between that they're probably going to cut by a quarter point. It's not going to be as much as people want. Some people have even been talking about a point or more, which is not going to happen Wednesday. So again, this is going to create a lot of volatility in the market. And obviously there's lots of things going overseas, wars, all kinds of things. So when you're looking to trade, how can you make money as an active trader? I'm an active trader. I do day trades. I do options. We're going to talk about both today. But we even the options that I do are quick and fast and I'm in and out quickly doing the weekly trades. So when I train, I'm looking for momentum and I prefer to short, which is what we're going to talk about also today. So if you have any questions, you can go to my YouTube, follow me there. I do appear on national television. You can watch my hits on my YouTube. I also have lots of Central Park nature videos if you like animals and birds. Um, and then I also have videos about trading. So if you have any questions after today, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Trite, uh, or, or Skype. So this does not have, these are our stats so far in the room this year. This does not have the last couple of days. Um, we actually uh, have had a really good year, 2024, considering the the bullishness in the market many of the trades that i have here the stats actually are shorts which again we're going to talk about shorting today but with an average risk of around three thousand dollars per day trade these are day trades on margin up for the year six hundred fifty thousand fifty six now you can risk whatever amount you want you can risk a hundred dollars a trade five hundred dollars a trade um you can risk more than three thousand dollars a trade it has to do with the size of your account and you also need a margin account which we'll talk about a little bit in a minute too i also don't have this week's options in here but the options i risk more money you can risk more you can risk less um, there's a lot of different reasons i risk more of my options trade so i'm risking an average of eight thousand dollars per trade in my options and we're up over 2.6 million for the year with that risk again you can risk more you can risk less one of the reasons people have options is because they can hold overnight you have a fixed risk if you hold an option overnight you could do one contract if you want uh, so most of the trades that we do are a contract cost of anywhere between one and three. I mean, six is expensive for us if we do something that is worth six dollars. But so far, year to date, this is day trades and options since January. Again, doesn't include the last week. We're 3.25096 for the year and going strong. Going into the next two months or less than two months now to the 2024 election, and this week, the Fed meeting, like I said, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to trade. And also, earnings season starts in less than a month in October. And that's going to be an exciting time to trade, too. So if you've been sitting on the sidelines waiting to trade, now's a great time to get started. Why? Because there's going to be a lot of opportunity. And opportunity equals money if you know how to trade it. And again, I'm not saying we're going to go up. I'm not saying we're going to go down. I do both directions. I prefer to short, though, okay? What I'm saying is we're going to have volatility and volatility by its nature is, means that something in reference to trading is something that's going to happen that's unexpected. 
So I wouldn't be surprised, like I said, if we have something that happens Wednesday from the Fed, it's unexpected. I wouldn't be surprised, even though we were rallying the last three days of the market, if we fall on Monday. So you have to be prepared to do anything in reference to trading. You got to be on your game. You got to know what to do. And you have to be motivated. I mean, you have to be motivated to do what? To make money, okay? <laughs> and anybody that has any questions, I can answer as we go along here. I'm seeing in the chat. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, volatility equals profits if you know how to trade it. Trade it. And again, there's many people that are trading the market that don't know how to trade. They lose. And so it's no surprise that they lose because they don't know what they're doing. Uh, a lot of people get excited about trading. They want to do it, but they just don't know where to start. So where do you start? How come you earn a living trading? Number one, you need a winning strategy. What do I mean? I mean, you need to utilize a strategy every day that points you to a trade that will win more than lose. Therefore, you have a high win ratio, meaning you have more winners than losers. Again, I included the stats for the year to date in here so you could see the winners and the losers. There is no 100%, okay? You need more winners than losers. You also need a supportive mentor, that's me. And again, I call the trades live in the room. It's good to have somebody to ask, ask questions to, to go back to, definitely a plus. And number three, you need to become an expert in one thing. So I think for a lot of people, they're back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out what to do and never really get where they wanna be because they're jumping around too much. When I started trading, I started doing shorts specifically and gaps. And then I just kind of found my way. Of course, I didn't know everything I knew right now, but I mean, I knew that I wanted to do gaps and I knew that I wanted to focus on shorting. And again, one of the benefits of shorting is what? When you're shorting, you're really looking for the panic to come into a stock or the overall market, okay? The benefits of shorting are moves happen quickly, fast, okay? And again, we want big moves. So that's the other plus about volatility, you can get a big move. So if you have a thousand shares and you short a stock at $10 and it drops to eight, you make $2, that'd be $2,000. So again, I'd rather make a dollar, $2, than 20, 30 cents. So I'm not scalping, that would be like a scalp, okay? So I'm looking for a good risk to reward when I take a trade. And I'm also looking for taking calculated risk, not just risk for risk's sake, okay? So you can't make money in the market without taking risk, but you have to say, I believe and have 100% conviction this is gonna work, or I don't wanna do it, because you could always lose your money. Every trade that you take, there's a possibility you could lose. So you have to take trades that have high odds of working in your favor, okay? So how do I do it? I use a 26 point checklist and I go through the checklist every single morning and I rate the gap, okay? And it says, bing, bam, boom, this is gonna go in the direction of the gap. And again, I prefer to short. We shorted BA on Friday. You can take a look at the chart. It was a nice one, okay? And actually, uh, you know, we went long uh, Uber. Um, we had a long trade in Uber. We got in and out. So every time I look at a gap, I'm looking again to see if it's gonna meet my criteria. And I figure this all out in the pre-market. So by the time the market opens, I already know what I like, what I don't like, whether I wanna trade and what ticker symbols I wanna do. So it's the consistency which allows me to have these types of results. And again, the stamina to be able in the market for as long as I've been in the market. I started trading in 2008. And I can't even believe it, but it's almost 2025. So I've been doing nothing but gaps and shorts since I began for a long time. And again, now I'm teaching people. But again, you probably know this yourself. If you've been trying to trade, people tend to jump around. They want to do futures. They want to do Forex. They want to do options. They go back and forth to different things. And it's all because we're looking for one thing, money. If you can take one trade a day and make money, that's really all you need. So it's about, again, being consistent, putting forth the right method to be able to move forward to do it instead of jumping around all the time. There is no get rich quick thing. You have to learn it, you have to do it. People come, they pay me for my class to learn the information, to understand it, and then apply it. And the benefit, of course, in the meantime, is hopefully you would take my trades and be with me in the room. But one of the cornerstones to everlasting trading success is really the consistency. This is the like something that I realize many traders, they just don't have it. But again, really hard to stay in the market for a long time if you're not gonna be consistent. And I think that that's 
focus again. And for me, it's focusing on institutional money. And how do I determine that? Well, I rate the gap. And we're gonna talk in a minute about what a gap is. So gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps, and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change of direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That's how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you, okay? So again, it's the whole point and the whole idea that you are wanting to do this to make money, okay? That is what you wanna do. You want to get in, you want to figure it out, okay? And you say, where are the institutions going to buy the stock? Where are the institutions going to sell the stock or dump it, okay? And again, when something falls, okay, how does that happen? Well, you can get shorts or you can also get selling. Now, when something rallies, you get buying. Sometimes you can get panic buying, but that's rare. Most of the time you get what is panic selling, okay? So here's an example here. What do I mean by institutional money? This is back, I don't have the last two days, but this was the SPY. If you remember the week of Labor Day, okay, the week of Labor Day, this actually sold off, the market sold off. We had a short week, but we fell. So this was, again, September 3rd was the day after the Labor Day. What happened here? The market gapped. Closed here, open here. So what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So if the US stock market closed at one price up here, again, this is four o'clock Eastern time, this was Friday, then it was the weekend, then it was Labor Day. Monday, gap down and open here and fell, okay? So what could you have done here? You could have shorted the market or you could have bought puts, okay? And actually we did do puts. So a put is an option, okay, where you are basically betting that the stock will drop and it's basically a short. So this was a nice sell off here in the market. So this was the third, fourth, fifth. Then we had another gap here. This was the sixth, which was Friday, fell off another planet, okay? And again, this was hard to believe, but that was a week ago. It was a week ago, okay? And again, a big sell off here into the Friday. So when I say institutional money, I mean money that is big money. Okay, and again, I prefer to short, but you can use it for the same point in buying too. But I'm using advanced technical analysis. What does this mean? It means reading price action in charts. So comprehending how to read, define, and trade with this power will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. Elevate yourself and your trading and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market. And again, if you know where something's gonna go ahead of time and you get in it before it goes there, that's how you're gonna profit. Like for example, if you knew what the market was gonna do after Wednesday, if you know what the Fed was gonna do, you could get in it before the move happens, before two o'clock on Wednesday. So again, we don't know what the Fed's going to say. But how do I know? Well, again, in the morning, in the pre-market early, I see the gap and I don't get in and in the pre-market, I wait until the live day. You can only do options on the live day. And again, we day trade, which are trades that you would take on the live day. So we, we did a bunch of shorts here in NVIDIA. Again, this was that same week, the exact same week here I'm talking to you about. It was Tuesday the 3rd, <laughs> right after Labor Day, we bought NVIDIA puts. I'll show you the chart in a minute. But on the options newsletter, I called the 110 NVIDIAs. It was around 1035 in the morning. So my options newsletter is a newsletter service that gets emailed to you directly. You take the trade when you get the email. And this was really a very cheap, $1.70. That is so cheap. Great trade, fabulous trade. Sold it at 625. And I'm going to show you the daily in a minute. This was a return on investment. Drop into it, exit at 268%. And again, I'll show you the chart in a minute, but you could have held this longer. You could have actually held this the entire week until the last day, which I did not do. If you bought one, you could have paid $170 with a smaller risk, around 1,000 average, 1190. You could have made 3185. This is a really nice trade. 
Again, what is the benefit of doing options? You have a fixed risk and you can open up options with a cash account with a minimum of $2,000. You don't need a margin account to trade options, okay? So here was the chart in the NVIDIA. Here. Stock close here, gap down. Again, I called the 110s. Look at the sell-off. Again, I got out in the first drop, but I just want to show you here the six on the last day. It almost came down to 100. It's crazy. This almost went to 100 from the point that I called that on the Tuesday, the third. I don't know what it was worth. It was at least over 400%. If you held it the last day, I didn't do that though. But again, this is a perfect example of what I mean by institutional money. What do they do in NVIDIA? They dealt it. They dealt it here, okay? So that was a sell-off, okay? So again, when you're looking at something, you're always, 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 always trying to play with the institutional money. That makes it so much easier for you to profit. We did another put here. We did the snow. We did the 120 puts in snow. This was the week of 830. Uh, it was 350 for a put. Again, advanced trader risk, 100% return investment. You could have risked four contracts. And again, 1400, you could have made 1400. Let's look at the snow chart. This was the 22nd here. Stock closed here, gap down, open, rallied, dropped. So we did the 120 puts in the snow. It came all the way down, broke 115. Actually fell the next day. Actually fell the next day, did break 115. Um, came all the way down, really nice sell off in the snow. That was earnings. Okay, that I should go back and look and see where this is now. So you, you see what I mean? Like when you think about it, think about it intellectually. So many people are constantly rushing, just taking trades and then killing them right away. So a little bit of money because they're scared it's going to fail or they're down a little bit and they quick, you know, kill it if it's down a little bit. The point of trading is not to just make a little, lose a little. You wanna actually make money. You wanna actually profit. You wanna actually get something out of this. You wanna actually believe in the trade that it's gonna go. You wanna have a big move. And when you think about it, what's gonna create those big moves, it's institutional money. And again, we're focusing here on shorts. I focus on shorts, but I will go long. Like I told you, we went long uh, Uber on Friday. But it's all about the big position players. I'm looking for momentum. If I see the momentum, then I take it in that direction. So I'm always taking the gap in the direction of the gap. And once you learn how to do this, once you can spot institutional money, it becomes so much easier to trade. And then even if you take a loss, you're not so worried about it because you could take the next trade and make three times the amount. Then you would cover the one loss and then you're still up for profit. So you can win big trading on the side of power. It's again, it's the idea of being consistent, but it's also the idea of the momentum when things go really, really big. And again, the sell-off that we had the week of Labor Day in the market kind of came out of nowhere, you know what I mean? And you could say, well, it happened because of this thing, happened because of that thing. Really, if you wanna read the economic reports, if that helps you get conviction for the reason for the trade, fine. For me, I'm really just looking at the gap. I mean, if I took the time to read every single earnings report and everything, I would never have time to do anything. I wouldn't have time to trade, I wouldn't have time to sleep. So I look at the chart. I look at the daily chart. That's where I'm seeing the gap. And then I'm taking the trade in the one minute chart after the open, when the market opens, okay? And, and here was the cues. So we actually had a sell off. This was the same week. The cues have been weaker than the SPY though. I will say that up until about the last two days though. Again, what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. The QQQ is closed here, gap down, open here, fell. Then we had another one here. This was the six. Closed here, gap down, fell off a cliff. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move. So we're looking for a big flow of money. That's what really sets the trend, creates momentum, and moves stocks to begin with. And of course, we're trading volume. We're, and we're trading stocks with volume. We're trading companies you know of. We're not trading penny stocks. We're not tra trading crap, okay? You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge in the market and stocks at all times, even if you think it's not, it actually is. 
So I just doing this over the years and become a specialist in really defining institutional money, reading it, predicting it, particularly shorts. And that's the benefit of coming and learning from me. You're going to learn what I know. And again, hopefully do the trades while you're learning at the same time. I mean, every trader on every level must learn the skill set to become good, and it's required through education. A lot of times people think if they're studying or they're using certain indicators that that's going to tell them what to do. If there was any one indicator or any combination of indicators or every set of indicators that told you exactly what to do, like a black and white, it would be very easy to trade and no one ever lose money, and that's not realistic. There's a reason there's a hierarchy, like a pyramid, like you have the point at the top where the people that earn money in the market make a lot and the people at the bottom are losing and everyone in between. And so this is the reason that it's set up that way. A lot of people don't want to take the time to really get good at something. Like I said, they want to jump around, but they also don't really want to learn, okay? Any questions here so far as I'm going along? Anyways, you know, it's, it's, it's the focus. So for me, I'm focusing on the gap, okay? And I'm also focusing on shorts, okay? It's particularly shorts, the fast trains. So I put in here the week before the Labor Day. I didn't have time to put in this past week, but we had another profitable week this week as well. But the week of the 26th, it was the week before Labor Day, just here's the results for the room. One week of trades. We did BA, which was a winner, QQQs, which actually was a winner, but I didn't get out of it. I got out, ended up getting out of it break even. I missed my exit. We did two Amazons, had two winners. I'm going to go over each of these trades. Foot Locker, which was a winner. Thursday, we didn't do any trades. And then Friday, we did Dell, which took a stop. And then we went back into the Dell. So we had one loser this week and one day that we didn't do any trades. Why? Because if I go through the whole process, and something doesn't meet my criteria that I'm not going to do any trades. And I think that that's important too, because again, what if, what if there's something Monday? What if the market doesn't go anywhere Monday and waits, is waiting for Wednesday? What if there's no earnings? What if there's no gaps? I don't know. Again, we've been watching BA, but this was back on the 26th. Uh, uh, this is BA, was down at 156, by the way, on Friday. Um, we entered the BA, this was 826 here closed here gap down we shorted it 173 we got out at 172.50 this was a day trade we got in and out now we have been doing puts on this as well just so you know profit on this on this one particular day is a day trade which was a trade on margin 1150 so that was monday then tuesday we did the market and i screwed this up though uh you could have bought puts in this as well if you didn't want to pay the price on margin, 473.30 was the short, and I got out break even. But I want to show you here, this did actually have more than a dollar move. I wanted it to go further, and then I ended up killing it break even. But this actually was profitable. Some people in the room got out of this with money. Stock close to your gap down, open, fell in the tail. I just didn't get out. Uh, I, was, I was doing the Amazon too. It was a lot to manage that day. But that was the 27th. Then we did the Amazon same day. I was contending myself with this. This closed here, gap down. This was Amazon, fell, shorted it at 174.10, got out of 173.25. Again, I'm calling these day trades in the rim live, calling the entry, calling the stop, calling the exit if you want to follow me. Profit was 25.50. And again, then we did a second Amazon, 172.75, and get out of it at 172.30. Again, this was... Tuesday, the 27th, and then Foot Locker was a really, 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 really nice one. We shorted it here. Stock closed here, gap down, open, rallied, dropped. Um, I just want to show you this came all the way down, broke 28. I got out of this at 28.65, but this was a really nice gap. Look at also what this did afterwards. That was really something. So again, institutional money took over the foot locker, dumped it, and then kept dump dumping it. <coughs> we didn't go back in here and do any day trades in here, but we could have. We could have. And then Thursday, A29, we didn't do any trades. Nothing rated per my system. Then we did Dow. Now Dow was a long. One of the reasons longs are tricky is because longs in general take longer to go. Actually, we had the same thing with the Uber on Friday. 
but we entered this and got stopped in this Dell here in the morning. This was Friday, 8.30. Then I retook it at 112, bought it, did in that at 112.30, averaged my price in at 112.15 and had a massive trade when it finally moved, but it was late, late in the morning, early afternoon. Here was the rally all the way up. Actually, almost got to 118. That was the 30th. That was right before the Labor Day weekend. So again, when I'm trading, you know, I'm trying to do one thing a day, one ticker symbol a day. It's a lot easier to manage. Maybe I will do two. But we had a good wink. Again, solid wink. Looking to do trades, looking to get after it, looking to book money, looking to do it early in the morning if I can. Most of the ones were in the morning. And particularly, again, like I said, I'm looking for shorts because you can get fast trade shorting. If someone said you can make $2,000 in five minutes or $2,000 in six and a half hours, you would say five minutes. So again, I try to trade always between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. That's the time that I'm looking to get in. And most of the time, again, the panic will come in really, really quickly, really, really big. Actually, BA, again, you can go look at the chart. We have time. I'll pull it up. BA actually sold off. Um, that was one. It did really sell off into the close on Friday, but it started to go in the morning. Again, the idea of the, the, the panic coming in for anyone and everyone. And the other thing is I find that a lot of people, a lot of day traders don't really know how to short. They prefer to go long, which is great if the market's rallying, but if the market is not trending up and stocks are doing different things or falling, it's difficult for people then if you don't have the market's help with you. And again, that's one of the things that I found that's given me a niche as well. So how are you gonna find and pick which gaps to trade? That is the whole system that I teach in the class. So again, what is a gap? A stock gaps when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next, simple. So you have gaps every single solitary day and the market gaps most every day as well. But golden gaps have huge opportunity because they spot power money. And again, the whole idea is to see something to get a big move, like every single you know, chart that I've just been showing you. Now, how do you find golden gaps? You use a checklist. Again, this is what I teach in the class because they have to be qualified. So it tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. Otherwise, I'm not doing it, okay? So I go through and I rate it and I use 26 things. The idea, the caveat, is to look for a rating that gets 20 points or more. If I rate the gap, again, like BA, for example, or Foot Locker, and it gets 15 points, I'm not shorting it. I won't do it. I won't do it at all. I'm also not flipping it, okay? A lot of people want to do gaps as gap fills, if you've ever heard of that. It doesn't work as something consistently to make money in the market. And I think people, they experience gaps, they sometimes do them and they say, wait a minute, I don't get this, this is confusing. Gaps are great to train if you understand how to do it. It's not as simple as doing it for a gap fill. And I think that trips people up, okay? And so I'm looking for a set criteria to, to figure it out. And that's how you become an expert in it. And again, it's the whole idea of not predicting the gap itself, okay? Predicting once I see the gap, the direction that it's going to go. But gaps are a secret ingredient in charts that many people overlook, and yet they hold a lot of significance. Gaps make the trend, set the trend, and continue the trend in stocks in the market. They set the trend because they're a definitive and demonstrative change and show a price in what is called an event. So the gap itself is the event, okay? And we're going to have an event this week. The market will gap on Thursday after the Fed. It could be a gap up, it could be a gap down, it could be a gap I play, it could be a gap I don't play. May not be a good gap. Gaps are a real show of the power of money. Gaps either continue the trend or in fact change the trend. If you follow the gap, you'll be following the power of money. For example, we may make brand new all-time highs in the market this week after Wednesday. Could be, could be before Wednesday. Or we could crash, okay, like we did the week of Labor Day. But there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock, and again, it's money. And it's, it's a lot of money, or what I call power money. Power money is in charge. 
Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which was a lot of in the market. That's institutions, that's hedge funds, that's big banks, that's large professional traders that take big positions in stocks. And so again, that's why we're only trading stocks that have volume and many of the companies that you know. But the amazing thing is that as negative as traders and analysts talk about the power of money people, they're the reason that one individual can be successful in the market. So for me, it is all about this. It is all about the checklist. This is the meat and potatoes of everything I do. If I get a gap that range 20 points or more, I will take it in the direction of the gap. I, if it's a gap down, I will short it as a day trade or I will buy a put, okay? So I'm looking then for the power money to come in and follow through in the direction of the gap and continue on the same day and then hopefully for a couple of days or the, the whole week. Any questions here so far? Let me look. Any questions? I don't see any. Okay. Anyways, Getting back to what I was saying, the most valuable thing that people can get is really in the chart. It's in the price action. It's just people don't know how to read it. They're looking for all kinds of moving averages. They're looking to buy support. They're looking to buy dips. They're completely oblivious to actually what's happening in the gap itself. And again, you have bullish gaps. You have bearish gaps. You have bearish gaps in uptrends. You have bullish gaps in downtrends. So seeing when and where this power money is going to go and, and, and be able to figure it out is really like seeing a gold mine because once you do it and can get into it, it's, it's just so easy to make money than once it goes. Again, there was a couple examples I showed you today. NVIDIA was another good one, you know, and the fact that that went all the way down and continued even after where I got out of it and almost got to 100, that was like the dream target. And that was only in four days, Okay. You can use this information to enter trades yourself so you can get paid with the power money moves. And again, that is what is so, so important. Um, it's really, you just can't press the button and just go, you know, doink and do it. If, if it was that easy, you know, everyone would make money. And again, what I have found is a lot of people are quickly in and quickly out, quickly in and quickly out because they just don't really know what to do. And that is really a lack of conviction. So they never make a lot when they're up and they never lose a lot when they're down because they kill it. And then they, they never really get anywhere. They never, they're never up, you know? Because they really don't have a set strategy necessarily to trade. Uh, someone say no sound? I... I hear you fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just wish people would ask more questions. I mean, you're giving us such great information here. <laughs> They're losing out. Um, yeah, I did. I, someone's asking something about, oh, there's Joe. I recognize somebody. Does a 25 point rating, it's 26. Methodology only applies to stocks. How about futures e minis? Uh, what, anything that has a day chart so that would be stocks and that would be ETFs. So the market, the QQQs is an ETF. The SPY is an ETF. The diamonds is the DIA, which is an ETF. So yes, you can use the system for ETFs, like you could even use it for something like a gold ETF, like GLD. But again, you know, if you're if you're looking to trade futures, then you'd be looking at reading and rating the market gap. And then if you want to trade it based on reading and rating the gap in the direction like that, you could do that. Does that make sense? Do I have to do you have to stay around all day in the trade? No, that's the whole point. I'm saying it's between 930 and 10 a.m that I'm trading. That's it. Now, when I'm doing an option, okay, if I'm doing an options trade, then I will check it. If I think it's going to go that day, maybe at lunch or before the close. If you're busy, you could put an order out to sell you out of the option without watching it. And if it hits, it's a day order. It's a limit order. It'll cancel at the end of the day if it doesn't hit. So say you buy a put in the morning at two bucks. You say, I, I got to go, I have a lunch today or a doctor's appointment or I'm going for a walk in the park. 
Put a sell order at three. If it hits you out, you made 50%. Put a sell order at four. If it hits you out, you made 100%. Come back and check it later. If it doesn't hit, you're in it overnight till the next day. So, I mean, I don't sit and stare at my options all day, if that's your question. The day trades right away is in the morning for the first half an hour. Options, you can't ignore your trades. You have to check them or you put an order out to sell you if you can't look at it at all. Like, say, you can't even check it, but you get in in the morning. So, again, that morning time is very, very critical. That morning time is the time that you got to and you want to enter the trains. But again, I'm not trading options as day trades. So if I buy a put at 9.35, I'm not going to get out of the put at 9.45 like I might get out of a day trade. I'm trying to get a bigger move in the put. You know what I mean? But the day trade, I may get in and out in five minutes. Um, I am, you, I am, I... Melissa Armo, focus on gap downs. If I don't find a good gap down, then I will look for a bullish gap. But that's my personal preference. Okay. That's not like a rule or something. Um, let me see if there's any other questions. I think that's it. If there's anything else, let me know. Anyways, you got to have conviction to make money. It's just, you know, it's so, so, like at the end here, again, I, I think we'll have time. I can bring up BA. If you don't have conviction, it, it like, again, the first part of 2024, the market rallied a lot. It was, we made a million new highs. It was crazy. I was, it was just ridiculous, actually. You could have bought support in the market and a million different strong stocks, like even weak stocks in the first couple months of the year. Bing, bam, boom, you made money. Things started to change as the year went on. And then you know, you're seeing a little bit more, a little bit more. And now we're getting into, again, like, I don't know what it is, 51 days to the election, 52. I don't know. I'll, have to look, I'll look it up today. It's literally like a countdown now to the election. Countdown to the Fed day, countdown to the election. I mean, you can't just buy support or buy a dip or even go long something that's strong, even the market. And, and I would be surprised. I would not even, I wouldn't even be surprised if the market sells off this week. I, I don't know if it's going to. I'm, I could make new highs, but don't be surprised. And then people get upset. They say, oh, it's rigged. They did it. They rigged it again. No, it's like, what, what are you doing? You know, it's just like, again, we're looking for specific, specific, specific criteria. And if it's not there, we're not doing it. We're not just buying every dip or shorting every resistance. Um, I don't look for, I don't trade gap fills. That's what I'm saying. I don't trade gap fills at all. I'm telling you they don't work. How do you know the gap down is indication going down? You rate it. That's what you learn in the class. It's a 26 points. If it rates 20 points or more, then... It has a high odds that it's going to continue in the direction of the gap, in which case then you would short it or buy a put. How do you project the extent of the move? Again, I'm looking for targets. I'm looking for targets. And again, that's something that I teach in depth in the class as well. Now, if you don't have time to look at the chart and follow the chart, like I said, somebody asked about it, you sit around all day, then you just look for the return on investment target and sell out of it. If, uh, but I'm look, I am looking for chart targets, to be honest with you. But again, you know, sometimes things go bigger than I thought, you know, bigger than you, than you think they're going to go, to be honest with you. Anyways, you can do this if you train from home. You absolutely can. So if you want to do this, the system tells you how, one and one. How do you make money in the market? Trade a strategy system that's profitable. Focus on the gaps. What stocks do you trade? Stocks that rate 20 points or more per the 26 point rating system. When do you trade them? Early in the morning on the open when they set up and trigger. And you have to have a structure. Again, so many people trade without a system. And I'm fo very focused on a system. And I'm looking for high probability. I'm looking to get in early. I'm looking for a good risk to reward. And again, whether you want to do day trades and options or one or the other, it's however you decide to do it is totally up to you but you have to be practical about this i get this from so many people who have been trying to trade for a long time they they act like they're committed and they want to trade but really are they 
You know, I mean, it, it's like people just, they jump around too much. Then where's the, where's the commitment? You know, it, it's sort of like you really kind of have to just throw yourself into something if you want to do it. So if my strategy sounds like something that you're interested in doing, then I support people that want to come to me, that want to sign up, pay me the money for the class, spend the time, be in the room. I answer the questions live during the class. I answer the questions after the class on email, phone. I try to be there for people to get it, particularly in the live room because I run the room every day. So the system I use to find the right gap each day is a 26 point checklist. That's what you'll learn in the class. And then you will learn the entries, the targets, and the exits. So again, if you're interested in doing this, you can empower yourself today. It's a complete system to trade. It is called the Golden Gap. This class is a class that I teach once a month, but I'm actually doing a live class next weekend here in New York City. If it's something that you wanna come, you, you, you have today and tomorrow to decide because the deadline is actually tomorrow. While I normally do online classes, I am doing a live class in New York. If you fly to New York or if you're in the Northeastern uh, uh, area, you can come if you want to sign up. But the deadline is absolutely tomorrow because the class is next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So this is a one-time only event. I normally do online classes, but this is going to be a great, great opportunity for people to come and meet me and meet other trainers. So it's a full course on how to strategically pick play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. So it is September 20th, which is the first official day of fall, September 21st, 830 to 5, and then Sunday, which is a half day, 830 to noon. Class tuition is $12,999. This is a live class in New York City. The deadline is tomorrow. I know I'm doing the webinar today, but that's just how it turned out. I do have a few spots, desks, because it's in a room where everybody's going to have a desk. And then I'm teaching at a big 68 inch screen. I'm teaching and we're gonna have charts and I'll have the class and I'm gonna be teaching live. So it's in a beautiful place in New York and I have a few spots left, but you would have to sign up by tomorrow. If you're interested, you can call me. If you're interested, you can email me. The bonus for this class is that you will receive the trading room through the end of 2025, the options newsletter through the end of 2025 and the market report through the end of 2025. That's a long time to trade with me. Get all my trades the rest, rest of 2024 and all of 2025. And then, of course, the support that you get. And I, I just think learning in person, it's going to be a great experience with people that are coming. And you learn more, I think, face to face than you do on an online class. Some people, you know, are coming that live in the, in the area and some people are flying to come to New York. And it's just going to be a beautiful weekend. I really looked at the weather. The weather looks good for this weekend. Any other questions? Let me see. Um, let me see. Anybody else? And I actually got through everything on time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Well, if you're interested, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want to sign up. If you have questions, you can email me or you can go to my YouTube and you can watch videos and some nature videos you're welcome thank you melissa great presentation